And uh, speaking of Moxley and speaking of AEW, Jim, we have the ratings. These probably won't be as as, uh, gracious and kind as Dave's were. These are from the Nielsen people, right? I believe that is who uh, is still doing these. That's right. Nielsen's ratings for AEW Dynamite August 30th on TBS. Art Nielsen and his brother Stan, right? Not those Nielsens. This one, (laughs) not this one, this show, this Dynamite. Was this watched, one over was, here. This one was watched by 871,000 viewers. <laughs> the same people every week. It's becoming a right it, joke. It is the same number every week. What are the, does it have the last, do you have the column of the last five or six numbers or whatever? I would have to, uh, well, don't, 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 have don't do any work, but last week, it, last week, the total viewership was 870,000 viewers. So okay, so they're they're growing by leaps and bounds. Eight seventy to eight seventy one. Where where did they start, and where did the exodus begin this week? These are the ratings as compiled by WrestleNomics. Quarter one, eight to eight fifteen p.m. John Moxley versus Commander with picture in picture, nine hundred and fifty seven thousand viewers. Wow. Okay. And by the way, I have clarified the Big Bang Theory apparently is no longer doing the big numbers that it was doing, what, a year or two years ago or whenever the fuck it was, where they'd start with over a million people. Apparently, even the Big Bangers have seen those reruns enough times that the the bloom is off the rose, so that's why they're starting. But still, 957,000 ain't a bad number to start with. But from their average, I have a feeling it won't last. Quarter 2, 8.15 8.30 p.m. The Orange Cassidy backstage promo. <clears throat> the Young Bucks FTR Bullet Club Gold backstage angle. The Tony Storm backstage promo. And Chris Jericho's live promo, the beginning of it. 913,000 viewers. So, as we suspected, immediately 44,000 people saw Plumber and Commander and said, all right, they're going to do this again. Quarter 3, 8.30 to 8.45 p.m., the continuation of Chris Jericho's promo, which is a confrontation with Sammy Guevara of sorts, the John Moxley and, what are their names? Uh, I was going to say Bullet Club. Uh, Claudio and, uh, yeah, the Black- Blackpools. The, the BBC. Their promo backstage, as well as Eddie Kingston versus Wheeler Yuta with picture in picture, 925,000 viewers. That is surprising that people would come back for anything that you just mentioned. But so they picked up 12 back. I think the Jericho Sammy thing may have gotten some people into it, but at least it was in the ring. That's right. <laughs> at least it wasn't just shit going on in the back. Quarter four, 8.45 to 9 p.m. The continuation of Kingston versus Yuta, the MJF Adam Cole backstage locker room promo, an ad break, Sammy Guevara and Don Callis' backstage confrontation, and the beginning of Adam Cole having a confrontation with Roddy Strong, Mike Bennett, and Matt Taven, 909,000 viewers. And the 12,000 they picked up and three more thousand said fuck it. Quarter five, the big nine o'clock hour, nine to nine fifteen p.m. Continuation of Adam Cole's confrontation with Strong, Bennett, and Taven. Penta El Zero Miedo's backstage promo. Emmy Sakura, <laughs> Marina Shafir, and Nyla Rose versus Britt Baker, Hikaru Shida, and Chris Statlander. Ding, ding, ding! I think we found the cliff. With picture in picture, nine hundred and ten thousand viewers. What? Well, again, it's the, continu- it's the continuation of the Adam Cole angle. All right. Okay. I see. So they stayed to see what the fuck that was all about. And then they saw the girls. So what happens next? Quarter 6, 9, 15 to 9, 30 p.m. The continuation of Sakura, Shafir, and Rose versus Baker, Sheeta, and Statlander. The post-match with Ruby Soho. The Kanosuke Takeshka Don Callis backstage promo. An ad break. And the beginning, is it the beginning or the whole thing? The whole thing of the acclaimed and Billy Gunn's ribbon-cutting ceremony for their new scissor-themed championship belts. 
828,000 viewers. Eight. Okay, so they uh, that's 72, 82,000 decided that woman six man was not to be tolerated. Well, not woman six man, six woman. Oh, well, that's right. Well, the six men rejected champions and their women. You can't have that. Quarter seven, 9 30 to 9 45 p.m. The entrances with picture in picture for Orange Cassidy versus Penta El Zero Miedo. And then there was an ad break. 763,000 viewers. Okay, now it makes sense because let's face it, they got a gift that they were able to stay above 900,000 people for this rotten, stinking, smelly program that they aired for an entire hour before people smartened up that this is all we're going to get. We ain't going to get nothing else but this. And then in the final hour, they started at 910,000, went to 828,000, went to 763,000. And now that they've got a good whiff of pockets, where did they go in the last quarter? The final quarter, plus there's an overrun. 945 to 10 p.m., Orange Cassidy versus Penta El Zero Miedo with picture in picture and Orange Cassidy's live promo. He did a promo? Oh, yeah. Oh, good Lord. 769,000 viewers Oof. with an overrun of 784 for the one minute of John Moxley and Orange Cassidy squaring off. Yeah, we don't buy that. Uh, I can't believe that it didn't drop in the final quarter, but I guess... Maybe somebody was tuning in thinking, certainly to God, this is not the main event. There's going to be something else going on. You know, with WrestleNomics, when they do the uh, ratings, they have a bar that shows the 90-day trend. And it's starting to show a little bit more effect each time you see it for the big drop-off that happens at 9.15. And it goes to the end of the show. I mean, this is the last... I mean, we said they've been having around the same number the last few weeks. They've been having the same drop-off. Yeah. Around it, that it, period of time, right after two, 200,000. Yeah. This was, well, this was, hold on. This was only 188,000. Last week it was 200 and something thousand. But that's, uh, yeah, they start with a, an audience they're handed, and those people slowly leave. Not, uh, I will give them credit for this over the last three weeks or so they've kept up the first hour remarkably well for what's been presented and maybe like you said that's they're waiting once they determine what mjf and adam cole's involvement is going to be then they're they're done but every week they lose between 20 and 25 percent of the audience they start with by the end of the program which is an anomaly from every other wrestling program that we're aware of right even collision it's not doing as, as well on Saturday night, but they keep the audience they get to begin with. They keep the audience that's there. You know, the issue, too, is with this women's six-person match, the trios match, I guess it the six it. The six-man women's match? The six-man women's match. There's no way you could write that on paper and not think that would cause people to say, you know, I've seen enough, I'll turn the channel. There's lots of but baseball he, on. There's lots of other things that... He wrote down Moxley versus Commander, and he wrote down Pockets versus Penthouse and didn't think the same thing. How about the fact that the international champion had to defeat Penta to get the opportunity to defend his championship against Moxley? <laughs> Isn't that kind of backwards booking? No, they, they think it's, it's a... Uh... It's a, a a privilege to get in the ring with the plumber because then they're going to look so much better because even pockets next to the plumber looks like a human being. Those were the uh, AEW Dynamite ratings for this past week. 